wondering how you're going to fit in all the wonderful ideas we've been exploring on proving your well-being? Well, let's see what the science suggests. Hi there, Michelle here from Michelle McQuaid TV. We're helping you find ways to move from functioning to flourishing by putting the latest science to the real world test. Now, over the past few months, we've been exploring lots of interesting ways to improve your well being, raising your positivity levels, discovering your strengths, practicing compassion, finding meaning, and igniting hope have been just a few of the approaches that we've been testing. And they're all great ideas, but just how are you meant to find the time to do all the things it takes to flourish? Well, drum roll, please. Researchers at Duke University estimate up to 40% of our actions each day, that's a little more than six hours, are not conscious choice, but mere habit. Six hours a day. Now imagine what you could do with that kind of time on your hands. The challenge, of course, is finding a way to direct this time towards the kind of positive well-being habits you actually want to be creating, rather than spending it in a mindless haze. Now, Professor Anne Grabiel at MIT has discovered that our habits run on a very simple loop of cue, routine and reward. Cue, routine, reward. Cue, routine, reward. So like most of you, I'm pretty time challenged, so I decided to test this loop in an 11 minute excuse proof formula to start creating the kind of well-being changes I wanted to be experiencing. So for example, when I wanted to start using my strengths, those things I liked doing and was good at, more in my work each day, I created the following habit loop. I used the first 30 seconds to create a cue. Now, a cue can be almost anything from a visual trigger to a certain place, time of day, an emotion, sequence of thoughts, or even the company of particular people. I find it easiest to anchor my cues to a regular time of day. I try and embed them in my environment so I almost fall into the habit, and I use when-then statements to prime my brain so it knows what it's meant to be doing. So I anchored my strengths habit to turning on my computer each day. I embedded it into my environment by placing whatever book or article I was reading across my keyboard the night before I left, so I had to pick it up in the morning to get to my computer. And then I used a when-then statement on the way to work. When I get to work, then I will read one new idea. Once your habit started, the routine can take over for the next 10 minutes. Now, a routine can be physical, mental or emotional, and it can be incredibly complex, or my favourite, fantastically simple. <laughs> it all depends on what you're trying to achieve when it comes to improving your well-being. For me, it was simply a matter of reading new research about positive psychology at work for 10 minutes. Then the last 30 seconds are perhaps the most important when you reward yourself for having performed the habit. Now, reward can be anything that produces a natural rush of dopamine, that feel-good chemical in your head that gets you craving more of the same behaviour. For me, it was writing down what I'd learned from what I'd read and any questions that it prompted about how we might work better as a team. Then on the Friday, I used to send this email to my boss with the heading, Three Things I Learned This Week. Now, not only did this little strength habit start to become the highlight of my work day, but the email to my boss started positioning me as a subject matter expert in the area of positive psychology. And it became instrumental in helping me achieve better and better career opportunities that suited my strengths and improved my well-being. All because of an 11-minute daily well-being habit. And this has been the secret to how I manage to exercise each day, to meditate, find time to laugh with the kids, to connect with friends, and to appreciate others around me. So if you had the gift of 11 minutes a day to invest in your well-being, where would you start? How would you queue up your habit? What would you do for your routine? And most importantly, how would you celebrate your success so that you wanted to do it again?
Want to try a new wellbeing habit right now? Then share this video with your family and friends. And if you'd like more practical and playful ideas from the latest science in human flourishing, then be sure to subscribe or stop by michellemcquade.com, leave your name and email address so you can hear all our news first. Thank you so much for watching Shell McQuaid TV. Remember you are good enough, so don't be afraid to let your light shine. Until next time, take care. I like to anchor my habits to a regular time of day, embed them into my environment so you can almost fall into the habit, but not that far. <laughs> Try from the top.